USCHO.com. Welcome to USCHO Spotlight for Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. I'm Ed Trefsker alongside Jim Connolly. After a couple of years away from the top, Boston College for two weeks now has been number one in the USCHO poll. And joining us on this week's USCHO Spotlight, the head coach of Boston College, Greg Brown. Uh, Greg got to see your team twice last week. Uh, two very uh, hard fought, uh, but successful games against UMass Lowell, both three, two decisions. You improve uh, still just a one loss team as the number one team in the nation. Uh, what do you like so far about this club? Um, I like that as a young team, we're, we're finding ways to really be competitive, and be successful. Um, you know, the games are tight. Uh, every game is a battle, but we know when we play Lowell, so it's going to be a scrappy game. And our guys have found ways to finish, uh, defended. Even when it's not always perfect, it's it's had the proper amount of intensity. So we've been able to to survive some games. And when the momentum has changed uh, to our opponent's favor, we've been pretty uh, resilient in hunkering down and making sure not too many bad things happen. You said it right off the hop, young team. Um, youngest in the nation age wise, but then I look at the players that contribute and I really want to just start with the freshmen and I, I'm going to re- read off what I literally could think of as an, a USHL all-star team. Will Smith, Gabe Perot, Ryan Leonard up front, Aaron Manetti and Drew Fortescue on the background about uh, the back end and Jacob Fowler and net all freshmen, five of them from the U S national team development program. Uh, I sometimes say that it can be hard to get these great players to acclimate to college. It has not taken uh, that much to, to get these guys to acclimate. They play a real competitive game. Uh, what are you seeing from some players like these that I just mentioned? Yeah. Uh, like you said, it, you never know how quickly the adjustment will come to college hockey. We've had some great players in the past that it's still taken them months or even a whole freshman year before they really hit their stride. Uh, fortunately, uh, these guys you mentioned have, have acclimated very quickly. I remember they looked a little surprised in the Quinnipiac a few ta- game a few times, but since then they've really found their footing and not only have been surviving out there, but really contributing to help us win games. Cut a Gauthier back as a sophomore after just an unbelievable freshman campaign that kind of got almost lost in the great freshmen that were in hockey East last year. Um, you know, you look around BU and UConn had some pretty special players too, but Gauthier, he was fantastic as a freshman. Seems like he has picked up right where he left off. Uh, talk about Cutter a little bit. Yeah. So he's always had the, and he showed last year, the ability to score. Uh, what the staff is most pleased with is his addition to, really rounding out a 200 foot game. Um, he's, he's much more detailed this year in his defensive play in his transition play. It felt like last year and he played great. I mean, he's had a tremendous freshman year, but it was more, uh, single-minded scoring, uh, plays that he's still contributing by scoring a lot this year, but he's also helping us in so many other areas. So, uh, he certainly has been, you know, one of our key, key, key guys to have this start that we've had. Greg, we talked a little bit about a young team and, uh, you know, both your freshman and sophomore classes and acclimation to the game. Are there different challenges that you have with a young team, uh, different approaches you need to do in coaching or working with the players? There are, um, you're going to have to, tolerate some young mistakes, I guess. Uh, you know, they're, they're used to, because they're highly successful, good players, they're used to kind of imposing their will on, on every game. And that, that gets harder when you're a freshman, uh, playing up in college hockey. So you, the coaching staff just has to have a little more patience. Um, 
try and teach as we go, but you you don't want to take away their confidence to to make plays because that's what got them to this point. So you have to that's a balancing act that you have to work at with young players. Giving them the, the leeway to continue to create, but also trying to figure out how to manage the game so it's best for the team as well. One of the things we talk about around USCHO or have talked about a bit early on this season is just taking a look from now and taking a look back over 10 years and realizing that really every team and every player in college hockey has gotten so much better. What are some of the things that are contributing to the players being so good and, and so skilled at this this time? Yeah, I think, I mean, everyone everyone evolves, you know, every time there's players making breakthroughs to, to try new things or to show new things, then the the kids behind them are copying those and, and then figuring out their own new things. So it's kind of the evolution of the game. I also think that, you know, a lot of the kids have done much more skill work than in the past. So the, I think as training methods become more improved, they can get stronger and faster. And then also with the skill work, you're right. But everybody can shoot a puck now. Everybody skates well now. The speed of the game just gets faster every year. So there's, you know, a lot of contributing factors, but I would say those. And then the kids who can improve their skill and strength while also being able to think and create plays are the ones that keep rising up and you just see you have to be able to think at such a high level because of the pace of the game in college and and above how is your ability you and your staff your ability to use technology especially video and clips and all that kind of stuff how's that helped out to uh, really develop players for sure you're teaching them at a much higher much quicker rate than we could in the past uh you use video, you show them clips of themselves and what their options were in a certain situation. And then you take examples from the NHL guys and show them how they might have done something differently or or changed one or two things. And when they see it, it's, it they can retain it and understand it much better than just drawing it on a whiteboard. Uh, so their, yeah, their learning curve is much steeper now. More with Greg Brown in a moment. We're back with Boston College head coach Greg Brown. We've seen some pretty high profile East West games around college hockey early this season. You had Denver and a couple against Michigan State. You're going to visit Notre Dame. Uh, how do you feel about getting those games in, maybe even seeing more of that kind of the high level teams getting a chance to play? Uh, I think it's so valuable for a team to play those quality opponents, especially early in the year. You're again, you're you can really tell where you are and as a coaching staff, where your team is and, and what needs to be worked on. But for the players themselves too to to see the game executed at a high pace and playing against tough opponents who can give you all kinds of problems in different areas. I think everybody learns faster. You become a better team quicker. So I, I think it's a huge part of the the growing process, the learning process to have some of those tough games early on. I want to throw one at you kind of from a different angle here, talking about rules and video replay and so forth. We're coming up uh, this off season on a rules change year. Are there some things that you would like to see changed or see the rules committee look at in this uh, upcoming year? Uh, there are a few, um, you know, we'll vote on those down in Florida. I, I think we have a few rules that are outliers, uh, different from the NHL that maybe we follow their model a little more, but uh, right now we just have to concentrate on, playing the game that's in front of us and abiding by the rules as best we can. Greg, I, I 
brought it up at the beginning, all these great freshmen. And I mentioned Jacob Fowler, your goaltender. And <clears throat> going back to last weekend against Lowell, I think maybe both nights he might have wanted the second goal back. But then I, I think on Friday, he stopped 11 shots. I'm sorry, 19 shots on Friday, 11 on Saturday after giving up that second goal. He really seems like a kid who can regain his poise even after a mistake. I know we had talked a little bit before last weekend's game about about this, but what do you see in terms of the, the poise that he has as, as such a young player in net? Yeah, I think it's one of his best strengths is his ability to just not be affected by what happened in the past and keep an even keel and just keep playing the game in front of him. I think he showed it last year with his success in the USHL, and it, it hasn't changed at all since his, in his transition to college. It, you wouldn't know if he's you know, made five great saves or let up a soft goal. He's just playing very even-keeled, uh, you know, always moving on to the next play. Does that rub off onto his defenseman as well? The whole team, yes, uh, absolutely. When you see your goalie calm, no matter what's happening, it it's a, has a calming effect on everybody, coaches included. Uh, he doesn't get frazzled. You know, if there's breakdowns in front of him, he's just playing the game. He's not looking for excuses or, or who to blame or anything. He's just rock solid in his mental approach. One of the uh, most improved teams in Hockey East uh, this season is Maine. And you, uh, your club will head up uh, onto the road this weekend, going to Orono. Um, th this used to be a pretty famous series when it was played back in, in the 90s and into the 2000s. Uh, it's lost a little bit of its luster, but with your program right now at 7-1 and one, Maine, they're having some early success right out of the gate at 5-1 and one right now. Uh, how, uh, how, how difficult of a test is this, obviously, for your team? But also, how nice is it to have you know the potential for another just great rivalry type of series with the, with the main Black Bears team? Yeah, it's very exciting. I think it's good good for hockey East, good for good for the college hockey. Uh, you know, it's always one of the best atmospheres in the game is to play up at Alphon, and you know, we're excited to go up. We know it'll be uh, intense atmosphere, and and. Both teams have been playing well, so it should be some good hockey. You you just mentioned atmosphere. You your your fan base probably needs to take a bow right now. Uh, you know, more than six thousand every game. You've had a couple of sellouts, and the, what stands out to me is the number of students that are in the building uh, compared to past years. Uh, that's nice to see. I'm sure as a head coach. Oh, we're so appreciative. Yeah, the, our student body has been outstanding. A uh, few theme games with what they're wearing and just the overall attendance and electricity in the building has been fantastic this season. Well, at seven, one and oh, number one in the country, Boston college, uh, it is a good start, Greg. Uh, we congratulate you on that, but I know there's a long road ahead of you. Uh, I, I wish you the best of luck and we, we appreciate your time. Hopefully we'll catch up later in the season. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me on. I'm sure we'll see you soon. That's Boston College's head coach, Greg Brown. Jim, you've seen a lot of BC. It's really interesting to hear Greg talk about the challenges of working with young players. And I especially like the point it, that he made that players were at the very top. They were the elite player, and now they're playing with a whole bunch of other elite players. And it's not such a dominant position for them. It's, it's interesting, though. I, rem I remember... Uh, Rand Pecknall during last year's Frozen Four talking about that. You know, he said every player that's on a Division One team was likely the best player on their team their their whole life, and that's definitely the case for this freshman year cl class that came in. But they've done they actually did it in multiplicity. You know, you had you know when you look at guys like Smith and Perot and Leonard up front, they've been aligned now for two years. They've played together. They've played around each other, and, and you can just tell that there's so much creativity that can bring. And I loved what Greg said. He said, you, you want to, you have to put up with some of the young mistakes because you don't want to stifle the creativity that will pay more in dividends over time to let these players create, let them do what they do best. Um, and sometimes as a coach, it's, you know, you have to manage things and you have, you have to do what's right for the team. But sometimes you also, when you have so much talent, sometimes you just have to get out of the way. 
Um, yeah, the one thing I, I talked to Greg about this last week was um, handling so much of that talent. He went back to, to actually Jerry York and said, when Jerry York was successful as a head coach, and of course, Greg worked under him as an assistant and associate head coach, he said, you never worried about your playing time. You worried about the team. And, and you can tell that that message is, is going through this young class too. I mean, these are great players. I, I've read that, that Smith Perot Leonard line off. They're not the top line on the team. They're the second line and they get second line minutes, but they're out there in key situations, but they're not the top line. And you have to be able to accept that you, maybe you've played on the U S national team development program as the top line for a year or two. Now you've got to, you know, maybe realize that there are some really unbelievable other talented players on the team. And that I think is what Brown does a good job. He incorporates all of them together. And it's a little mind boggling to think about how good this team might be come January or February when all those freshman jitters are out of the way and they get more acclimated to the speed of this game. And we did touch on how the game has improved uh, players uh, with training, with skill development, and also a mention of technology. And when you think about how, much they can break down things individually and as a team and really show players. And, you know, he was very enthusiastic about how that's helped coaches. You have to embrace it now. Um, there's no cho choice, but it also makes jobs a lot easier. I can remember video guys just eight, 10 years ago when I travel on the road with some teams and watch their video guys, you know, finish the game, eat the quickest bite of dinner, and then hop into a hotel room and break down a game until four in the morning and then just start to move clips into people's inboxes. That's almost done in instantaneously with new tech, new advances in technology. And um, that, that helps players get immediate feedback, whether it's right after the game, whether it's during intermissions, all of that stuff. I know you, Derek and I talked on Monday about, you know, my desire to see iPads on the bench. I think you should be able to have some technology on the bench, you know, it, it would make teams certainly have to catch up financially to be able to do that. But I, I think that the more technology we can add, the more skill we're going to see in this game, the better game we're going to get, the better product we'll get on the ice. And I also go back to the, you know, that whole creativity. I love what Greg said about, you know, somebody makes some sort of a great play somewhere in hockey, these young players copy it. And then they try to make, put their own little spin on it and, and make the plays even better and more, more difficult to defend defend. And we've seen that the, the creativity of goals. I mean, Mike Legg scores that goal back in 1996, the Michigan, we didn't see that again for 15, 20 years. Now we see it probably about, you know, at least once a month in some level of hockey somewhere, because players, all they want to do is, 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 you know, imitate what, what happened years ago. Now you're getting that innovation on a week to week, month to month basis, not every, you know, decade or two. Yeah. All the guys want to imitate Trevor's egress. Right. I, I, I liked what uh, Greg had to say about getting more of the top level East West games in there, especially for Boston college. That's got to be tough because they have two of their non-conference games committed to the bean pot every year. And, and I believe most of the bean pot schools still commit a third game to playing a team, one of the other teams that they know that they won't play in the opening round. Um, it, 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 it does take away the ability to, to schedule games. Um, you, you have to be creative with your schedule, but you can see Boston college trying to do that. You mentioned Michigan state, you, it, maybe you wanted to play Denver twice and they played them just once And Providence took the other night of that uh, two game weekend. They'll go to Notre Dame for a couple, I, I, you have to try to put that type of challenge into your schedule. And it's the, you know, it's the experience for the player too, um, to get to play a team that they typically wouldn't, you know, get to play and they see on TV every now and again, or to get to go and take a trip to, uh, you know, South Bend, Indiana or Denver or wherever it might be, you know, those are great experiences for the players, I think. And, but as he, he mentioned the test of the hockey, um, when you play some of the top teams from around the country also is, uh, serves the teams really well. Finally, uh, Greg smiled and laughed a little bit when I asked him about rules and video, it's pretty clear to me that there's some things he'd like to see changed. And he, uh, he admitted that, but didn't tip his hand, but it sounds like it should be, 
quite the discussion come April down in Naples when the coaches get together. There's no doubt about that. We've, we've, We've heard plenty already from our our pal on Mondays who's back in the coaching game, Derek Schooley. He has some thoughts on things he'd like to see changed, and I'm sure everybody sees little things. But I liked I liked what what Greg said too. He wants to see the game align more with what the NHL is doing. So make sure the rule book kind of looks like the NHL rule book as much as possible, um, because you really are trying to prepare these players to play at the next level. Um, and if you play by one set of rules in college and then have to adapt to another one in, in the pro- professional level, that, that's not always beneficial. So I think that aligning the two books a little bit better is a good thing. Um, but there's some things we know that sacrifice wise, we'll never see uh, players play without cages in, in college hockey. The NCAA will not take that type of liability. And if anything, I think they'll add more protection over time. So, but I do like, uh, I do like the feedback that, that Greg was able to give there. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks for tuning into this episode of USCHO Spotlight. For Jim Connolly, I'm Ed Trefsker, and we'll catch you next week. Mm-hmm.